<laughs> so, like, we thought, given that we're on the cusp, so when we're recording it's the 8th, the Xbox Series X is coming out in two days, uh, and the Series S as well, and then um, the PlayStation 5 is coming out in four days after we record this, so next gen's right around the corner. It actually, it felt, I don't know to you, like, just in general, it felt like such a long and short simultaneously lead up to these consoles because it's almost like normally you see them a lot earlier. You can pre-order them a lot earlier. So that kind of hype that was building up about it, it just felt like it was going on forever. And then when you actually look at the whole window, it's actually been fairly short of, you know, Hey, these are the consoles and this is when it's going to be released and this is how much they cost. Did, did you, do you have that feeling about this, this launch or? Yeah, the same. And mm. in terms of the it feeling long and then short, it it almost mirrors like everything else that's going on in the world at the moment. And, and that's, yeah, that whole perception of time is that you know that's everything true. from April to like September ish just felt so long. And it feels like since then everything's just like I can't believe we're you know already in the eighth of November. It feels like you know this month is going already going so quick and. Mm. That's what I felt about these consoles is that ever since, I guess, we, you know, like I'd say since July, August, it feels like things have just now happen, come come up so quickly, whereas before it just felt so long. And I think that's just because everything felt so long. Um, but you're right. Normally, there's a much longer lead up. Lead up. Normally, it's we get the proper, you know, unveiling the E3 prior and then the next E3 will be kind of where they really dig into it and then they launch mm. in that holiday period. So it's kind of, yeah, it's actually been a way shorter cycle than, than normal, I reckon. Yeah. And I, I think like, you know, the way memory works, it's sort of like dependent on how many, how much stuff has happened. And then that gives you a sense of how much time has passed. Because, you know, I, I was, you know, my phone randomly shows me images and photos that have happened. And like, I don't know what the algorithm it is, but it just shoots things out. And one of them was, it showed me, um, you know, me going to a tool concert this year. And I was like, wait, I went to that concert this year. <laughs> it literally feels like years ago. And then it's also weird, weird in the whole context with coronavirus. I was like literally in a concert stack with people sweating all over each other. And that was February of this year. And it just feels like, oh my God, like, you know, I, I can't even imagine myself going to a concert for a long time, to be perfectly honest. Like I'm pretty conservative with that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's been a funny, funny, funny year. And these consoles, I don't know, it just really came up very quick. Like, all of a sudden, I was listening to podcasts and people are like, oh, the consoles are coming out next week. I'm like, oh, yeah, they are. <laughs> like, they really are. And it's, it, it, yeah, like, the lineup, it's interesting, dude. Like, I, I want to be hyped. And I am actually hyped about them because I think the SSDs are really, really cool. But I just feel like there's never been a launch that's so iterative and ev hmm. evolutionary not revolutionary so i definitely feel that about the xbox side i think everyone would probably agree that you know it feels like almost like just the next you know iteration of the xbox one kind of you know well, line from the yeah, xbox, like it's almost one, xbox one, one x2 yeah um and the yeah the launch lineup is probably the biggest thing with that and honestly if you know and that's because the absence of halo you know the, we know the reason for that um whereas the playstation side does feel a lot more like a tra traditional next gen launch but it's kind of when you combine it with the xbox side definitely um but both platforms you know more than ever have are now just like well backwards compat you know like we mm. We kind of forget that backwards compatibility like wasn't even there for the Xbox One at launch. You know that came after. Um, oh, for, you know, instance, that, for a second, I thought you were talking about the Xbox OG. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's really mm. this generation where it's become almost the standard. Now I know that I know the consoles have had backwards compatibility before. You know, the PS2 had it. You know, for for PlayStation and stuff, and you know some of the versions of PS3, and then they start you know having different versions that didn't have it. The Wii. You know, some versions of the Wii, the good versions, could play GameCube games. And, you know, like, it's yeah. not a new thing, but it's almost like it's been a, a much bigger focus this this gen, this next-gen launch, and especially on the Xbox side, because they've had to focus on that. Um, you know, they've, they've got a couple of, you know, good, 
good games at launch, but they haven't got that killer app. Um, and so they've had to kind of focus on, especially first party app, um, they've had to focus on everything else, you know? So, mm. so I mean, yeah, there's like two big things that I want to chat about there. So like the lineup versus the backwards compatibility stuff in terms of the lineup for me personally, like I really feel, and, and you know, I think you and I, even though, you know, I, I joke that you're an Xbox fanboy, I don't think either of us is too biased to the consoles. Like in terms of we have an allegiance and, you know, we won't judge things as, as independently as we can. You know, I love a lot of Nintendo stuff, but there's reasons why I love that. Um, and I, I definitely think I have a bit of nostalgia goggles with some of their games, but with the Xbox Series X, just again, to me, it's sort of like, I just feel like you're not going to miss out on anything if you're playing in your current setup, like Xbox One X, like if you have that, it's like, uh, I just, to me, there's no compelling reason to switch. Whereas with the PlayStation 5, at least for me, you know, and, and we're not talking about this in its own segment, but the whole, I don't know if you watched the Demon's Souls um, state of play that just got released last night. So that went for like about 12 minutes. Like that game to me looks like that next gen game. Hmm. And it's like exclusive. You can only play it on the PS5. Then there's um, Astro Bot, which also to me seems like such a cool experience. Ratchet and Clank's right around the corner and just kind of like, you know, as someone who's not really like pro PlayStation or Xbox too much, I've had both consoles. I just feel like, you know, the lineup with uh, PlayStation 5 is more compelling like it's more of a reason to get one like you feel like you're missing out it's that fomo it's like oh geez that demon souls games look incredible and it's the only place to play it whereas you know pretty much everything on the xbox apart from uh you know something we will talk about the medium um is is sort of like on both or on prior consoles yeah definitely and the you look at the playstation lineup and you know astro Astro looks amazing. The only thing about Astro is I don't know how much of a fully featured game it is. I know it's a pack-in. Um, so it's about three hours if you just get through it. Okay, so I think so that's it's, not a full, I think it's full featured game. Yeah. So, um, but it's it looks amazing, um, and it you know is it's a it's a showcase just like you know Nintendo yeah. would do. It's a showcase for for you know the new haptic stuff and everything like that. Um, and for me, yeah, Demon Souls is is the the launch game you know that is that is the that is the one you know you know (laughs) if you don't if you really don't care about demon souls then maybe you know spider-man miles morales will will kind of be your launch game um they're kind of the two big ones um especially on the playstation side because they're obviously exclusive um now something like godfall i know we've crapped on godfall but um (laughs) there's that game like I, what something I've said I haven't said before is that you know that game has potential. It's just I think the marketing has really failed it. Um, the every time they've shown it off, they've shown it off in a way that just looks very unappealing. Um, so there's some people that obviously might be excited for that. It is exclusive. Um, well, it's only a temporary exclusive. It's temporary exclusive. To, it's like six months, well, I think. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I think that's that's likely and that's they said okay it's exclusive this period of time but i mean there's nothing officially announced that it would be coming to xbox. oh i thought it came out just the other day that it's gonna come out to xbox no, that, series x that's that's the um that's people musing on the fact that it's a timed exclusive so it's ah, likely okay. it's very likely that's the case yeah it's um, almost certain that it will yeah. but yeah and and then we've got, you know, a whole bunch of games that are being, um, you know, either getting huge expansions at the time, you know, of the launch, like Destiny 2, um, or, you know, No Man's Sky, where, you know, they're getting significant enhancements for next gen. So on the PlayStation side, oh, I'm sorry, and you've got, you know, big third parties that are launching both on next gen and current gen. So, you know, talk about Valhalla, Black Ops, Cold War, mm. which is obviously a huge deal. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. It, and Call of Duty, that's going to be like the number one game on, on yeah. next gen i mean you can look at that in the sales charts it's already number one um, yeah, and, yeah uh, and, and, and assassin's creed is gonna be massive as well you're yeah. right yeah and you know Watch Dogs legion has already come out now but now obviously it's coming on next gen actually did you hear something funny about um the procedurally generated npcs in Watch Dogs legion <laughs> no what happened so it's you know how they they procedurally generate all the npcs and they get they'll give them um 
occupations, but then also like tidbits about them. Mm-hmm. So one was this is no joke, uh, pediatrician, and the yeah. tidbit was has ended a relationship with a former uh, uh, client. <laughs> client. <laughs> 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 oh um, dear oh but dear i also don't want to forget like the it's pathless funny. does look very good um <laughs> on the ps5 and mm. um as much as people laugh about it, you know and while it's cross-gen you got you know cool games like bug bug snacks which is on ps plus so you know that'll be that'll be a game that a lot of people will probably play because it'll be free on on there oh, and it's such a smart idea such a smart idea yeah because it also helps people you know like people always forget there's going to be people who <clears throat> have been off playstation and go, hey, you know what? I miss PS4. PS5 plays all of PS4 practically. You know, why don't I jump on this new generation? There's a, there's a bunch of people that go through that cycle. Yeah. So this just helps push them even further. And along with, hey, here's 19 games that come mm. with PS Plus Collection, which are insanely good games. Um, and also just on that quickly, we've got confirmation that the way it works is pretty much how PS Plus works now, which is... You, you have the games on your profile if you've downloaded them or like it's basically like buy them quote unquote but they're free um, and then they links it to your account and as long as your account's active you have the games so if you deactivate it and activate it later you'll, you'll have the games on your profile which is actually really interesting to know and I wonder when they're going to expire because I don't feel like licensing they won't have that forever so so you should just go and get them all and even if you don't plan on playing them for ages, if that's well, yeah, the way it works. And we still don't know how it works. So we'll have to wait till mm. Thursday because they keep on emphasizing that you have to do it on the PlayStation. So currently with PS4, you can do it in the app or the web app. So if you can do it there, it, it's almost worthwhile getting a month trial just to add them all to your profile. Yeah. And another game that is on both that, Honestly, the more I see about it, the more I hear about it, the more that it actually looks really cool. It's actually Dirt 5 of all games. <laughs> I was going to joke and say Need for Speed. Um, yeah, so Dirt 5 yeah. actually looks... When you it watch the insane. next gen... It looks yeah, insane. when you next watch the next gen footage of that, it's really cool. And we'll talk a bit about Codemasters later as well. But um, I guess, look, on the PlayStation side, look, you can't go past Demon's Souls and Spider-Man. Um, they mm. are huge hitters for a launch. Uh, and then, as you said, with Ratchet around the corner, which looks like a truly next gen game, yeah, um, yeah, PlayStation definitely is from the game standpoint for next gen things. You can only play, you know, as you mentioned, FOMO. It's it's PS Five um, for the Xbox One side. So, you know, they may have the numbers in terms of obviously the overall. Um, you know, they've got everything on Game Pass and stuff like that. But they just don't have those huge hitters. And their huge hitters are third parties that are on PS5 as well. So, mm. you know, if you care about Black Ops and Valhalla, well, you can play it on either. So there's no reason for either of them. Um, there is actually one game that um, actually does look pretty cool. And it's almost like <laughs> you got the Pathless on the PS5 side and you got the Falconeer on mm. the Xbox One side. The Falconeer actually looks really, really cool. Uh, very different style of game. The Falconeer is kind of almost like a Panzer Dragoon style game or like a Star Fox, um, as opposed to Pathless, which is, you know, like an act, like an adventure game. Um, but uh, yeah, the Xbox, I mean, probably the biggest thing I'd say call out um, that's exclusive is, you know, Yakuza, which will eventually come to PS, PS5 uh, and is on PS4, going to be, you know, available um mm earlier as well but um if you want to play next gen yakuza you've got to play it on xbox one until march um mm. and honestly gears tactics um because which you is know, a game that people are sleeping on yeah and because it's this that game got really good reviews and when it came out on pc in april but i mean it hasn't it's not coming out it hasn't come out on console until now so it's uh yeah i think that's that's actually good but it's not going to move the needle you know like we know that, you know, also Gears 5 is getting significant enhancements, but mm. it's hard for me to consider that a launch game, you no, know. it's not. Yeah, it's like, it's, but it's, the work they've done on that is way more than just, you know, than let's say, oh, we just make it run in a high resolution. They've actually done a lot of work there, but that work was probably also in place from the PC version that was there. So, yeah, but yeah. overall, I mean, you know, the, 
there's quite a few there are smaller titles in xbox one launch that may not be on ps5 right away um it's hard to kind of also look this stuff up because it's so messy with okay is it in the list of launch games because it's available just by smart delivery well is that technically next gen or not (laughs) it's it's like okay it recognizes which console you have and then downloads the assets for that console so it's hard to kind of say okay is that technically next gen it's weird this this whole lineup thing especially the xbox side is just it's really weird this time um but it's kind of cool like the smart delivery thing is great that you only have to buy it once you know so it's while we're kind of saying it's like we're kind of crappy on that a little bit it's technically and from a consumer standpoint it's actually really good but definitely when you talk about the lineup ps5 uh, that's the one that's got it yeah, and then, you know, on that backwards compatibility point that we mentioned earlier, you know, and we, well, probably I got a little bit attacked by people around backwards compatibility because I was always a bit wary of it. And I've always felt, you know, whenever Sony has to rely on anything software to do emulation or backwards compatibility, they always have issues versus Microsoft. They're almost at a point where, you know, they're so good at that stuff that it's pretty in- indistinguishable like in terms of the backwards compatibility if they're using anything of the software and you know we've even seen and you know there was a story last week around assassin's creed um syndicate that that was one of the games that wouldn't like they kind of almost said it wouldn't work on the ps5 and then quickly ubisoft retracted that statement but you're hearing now from hands-on with people and what happens is a lot of the games on the ps5 that have the PS4 backwards compatibility. I don't know if you know this, but when they load, it actually gives you a warning message saying huh. saying that there's there's there may be issues with this game and and graphical artifacts and things like that. And then just hearing people play really big games like, you know, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, they're like, "Oh, the textures are weird and there's weird stuff in the game itself." And I I just don't think it's a one for one. I don't think like Xbox version of backwards compatibility is equal to PlayStation's version of backwards compatibility, even though people are talking about it interchangeably. What would really suck, and I hope this isn't the case, is that you you know you're playing like Syndicate, which is a great game by the way. Um, mm. But it's you know it's also significantly it's, it's, a, it's a massive game, and if you get all the way through, or you're getting a good way through the game, and then suddenly you hit. Um, game breaking glitch because of backwards compatibility that would really suck i really yeah. hope that's not the case because at that point um you may not be able to progress i'm not sure if you can then sync your save back to your old console to keep playing it probably not you know i i find that would probably be difficult to do yeah um so at that point you're kind of screwed unless they patch the game and they probably i'd say bigger publishers would probably patch the games if it's you know if it's something simple but um there's a Mm. lot of games that wouldn't be patched yeah and i think that's for games that are like selling right so maybe it's a year or two old it's still selling you want to patch that and make sure it works but for a game that is only seeing modicum of sales it's just not going to stack up economically to go back and fix things and and to me, it, it's concerning when you have developers who are trying to actively make it work. You know how there's that now infamous, I guess, list of games that don't work on the PS5 from the PS4. And some of the developers are still going, we don't know why this is not working. And I'm like, that's mm. just like odd to me. Like that's, it does really make me wonder, you know, once this goes out into the mainstream, the amount of YouTube videos we watch on you know, stuff that just doesn't work and and just like a bit of a mess because of backwards compatibility. And then the next one is like, I wonder, and you will never know this, but I wonder how much work CD Projekt Red had to do to make sure they're removing any of those graphical artifacts. Because from my perspective, Cyberpunk is just going to be regarded as a launch window title for uh, the next-gen consoles. More so if it came out when it was meant to, but I I acknowledge now that it's December 10, it's like kind of out of that window, Um, even the, you know, more liberal window that you could give it. But I think most people, when they think about that game in 10 years time, will think it's a PS5 slash Xbox Series X game more than it's a last gen game. Well, you even even had control, um, like Remedy... uh, I'm I'm not sure if it's Remedy or 505 that announced it, but basically saying that the next gen version of Control... Is not actually going to be ready till next year now. So yeah, 
Well, there's and, been a few delays in that way. Yeah. And we'll, we'll get onto another one soon, but... The, uh, the one thing I, I forgot to mention, uh, call out in the Xbox lineup, um, although this one's a bit of a kind of, you know, this this context to this one, um, is Tetris Effect Connected. You know, that's actually... Oh, yeah. That's actually yeah. a really great launch title. The thing is with that is that eventually the, you know, I guess the connected version or, the, you know, a whole bunch of that stuff will be available as like, I'm not sure if it's paid or a free update for the te- the standard version of Tetris Effect on, on PlayStation 4 at least, uh, which I guess will be backwards compatible on PlayStation 5. God, it's so confusing. But um, <laughs> so Tetris Effect Connected is really, really cool, I think, to have on launch. Um, again, it's not, you know, especially considering it's like just, a, it's an upgraded port, basically. Um it's not what you'd consider like a you know a killer app, but that, mm. I just wanted to call that out. I forgot about that one. So yeah, and then you know just going back to the, you know like the games and the new features. I, you know for me, you know thirty thousand foot version. Like hey, what's what's new in next gen? To me, like so far, both consoles. The discussions around ray tracing. That's one thing. Uh, the other one is now it's this juxtaposition, not juxtaposition, but the choice that gamers need to make between do they want to play in performance mode or quote unquote cinematic mode in games. It seems like so many games are going to force you or at least have that option, which I know is in some games, but it seems like that's now becoming like a standard thing in games, which mm-hmm. a bit odd to me. Um, and then obviously then the headline feature of, of the next gen is the SSD. Outside of that, yes. I, I don't really see anything else like that people are really saying okay this is thrusting forward this is you know i could go back to the other generations i mean for god's sakes like we're talking about hey you can play online with your friends like that's a feature like that's huge yeah you know ssd is the closest thing to being the big feature i think in this console yeah and on the ssd so they came out this week the the series s which um is it 500 or 512 um gig What's the size for the Series S again? It's 512. 512. Like, and, you know, that's, that's by the way, whenever we say that, that's the, you know, kind of manufacture 512. That doesn't mean that's the usable, yeah. usable so, space, which is what you're getting to, yeah? Yeah, so the usable space, it came out that it will have 364 gig of usable space. <laughs> that's and, nothing. And I, like, you know, on, on some forum threads, um, you know, where, where I roam, um, I'm like, yeah. anybody that defends this is in denial. And oh my god, Pete! Some people were pissed about that. Or oh, really? Well, okay, not pissed, Why? but they were like, "Oh no, this is fine. It's a win-win for me." And I'm like, "How is like I didn't bother responding to these people because <laughs> I'm like, at this point, you're just you are those fanboys. You're like, how is 364? Like they've already announced that on PS5. So I'm not sure about Xbox Series S or X. Um, that on PS5, uh. Black Ops Cold War is like 150 gig download without Warzone because I'm guessing they're adding Warzone. I'm not sure about that. I don't know enough about the next Call of Duty. But I'm like, okay, so if you want to play the next Call of Duty on your Series S, which a lot of people will want to, that's possibly going to take up close to more than a third of your your hard drive in one game. Now that's yeah. it. That is. Um, that is on the upper end of things. I understand that. There's a lot of games, especially, you know, a lot of smaller Game Pass games where you're not going to get, you know, anything close to over 100. But 364 gig, that's like 360 era sizes, you know. <laughs> it's it's kind of, especially for a console, and I know it doesn't make as much difference these days because you have to still install them. But, um, you know, that's a digital-only console. So it's kind of like, at that point, now... We know you can have your cold storage games on a on a like a, a regular old USB hard drive that's not like an NVMe kind of fancy SSD one. So you can do your cold storage on that stuff, but anything you actually want to play, you know, you have to has to be stored on that um, SSD, or you have to fork out. Do we know what was the Australian cost of the expansion pack? It was like three hundred and something bucks, wasn't it? Three eighty, I think. And I was just on the eBay site before, and it's sold out. So I don't think you can get it it's- at launch. Like, but even if you were to buy an Xbox Series S and go, oh, wait, this this is really, this is getting tricky. I'm going to go get me an expansion pack and you can get one. Then suddenly you've already spent the cost of a Series X. Correct. And plus, you know, I, I know I keep saying it, but that $50 difference that they <laughs> baked into the price. I mean, it does add up though, dude. Yeah, yeah. Like I it gets you closer to the Series X and you're right. Like, <clears throat> you know, the extra space that you get. 
You know, it's extra half gig space on the hard drive with the Series X compared to the Series S. Like, that's massive. And, you know, I know that you before you were saying, hey, it's just call, like, it's Call of Duty, but Call of Duty will be the number one game that comes out on the next yes, gen. Yes, yes. So, the number one game is going to take up a third of your space. And, and what it reminds me of is actually very last gen, last, 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 last gen. You remember back in the day with stuff like the PlayStation, the memory cards? That's exactly what I was thinking of. It's like games <laughs> that would just take the whole memory card. Yeah. yeah, the memory card, you have like slots on, on physically. This is really dating us now. Um, you know, you'd have, you could write down what game is on there because you could only fit one to three, maybe, you know, game saves. And game saves, by the way. Um, yeah, so that's what it really reminds me of. And uh, I have to say, I really, you know, I'm sure you're the same. A lot of people ask me about technical stuff or tech stuff and gaming. Like, hey, you know, my kid wants to buy this or I want to get that. Should I get this or should I get that? I have to say, I was almost like on the side that, hey, I think the Series S is not too bad to recommend to people. I'm completely off it now because this hard drive is just farcical. It just won't I, fit things. If I know the, if I know someone is only going to play maybe a couple of games and that's all they'll ever really play, like someone will pick up your FIFA or they'll, they'll play Battlefield or something. You know, if I know that they're not going to need it, then I'd s- still be like, okay, look, yeah, this is the case. But if you run into any issues, you know, you may need to upgrade in the future. But it's the thing for me as well is that, you know, the, the I guess one of the, okay things about this is if you if you are an existing xbox one owner and you already use an external drive like i do and most people Mm. is that all that stuff you can just plug straight in so you can anything that's like from last gen backwards compatible you don't have to use that space up with that you know you can just plug that hard drive straight in and and just continue to use that because any backwards compact games don't need to be loaded off the ssd but you know, though, especially for anyone that's going to pick up a Series S that hasn't had an Xbox in a while, maybe not mm. since the 360, they, it's, yeah, it's going to hit them because they're going to be, oh, yeah, 364 key, that sounds huge. You know, why do I need more than that? And then they don't realize that Call of Duty is 150 gig or so. Now, the Series S is probably, the assets are probably going to be lower than that, but still, yeah, knowing but not, that though, they'll, like... each update will add another 20 gig onto that, you know, and it's like, so Call of Duty on PS5 <laughs> could end up being over 200 by the end of it. Like, you know, let's say uh, smarter about the way they handle their updates. Yeah, I, I'm just not, they're not though. Like, you know, and I actually will rate what Microsoft says. I think they've changed a lot. I think you can actually you know, defer to what they're saying as being honest. But I think the whole, I'm not saying they're being dishonest, but their whole ploy around, hey, you know, because it's the Series S and it doesn't really natively output to 4K, but it can, by the way, like, which is kind of odd. I think it can, I'm not 100% sure I should have checked this. I think it might even be able to output to 8K, but it just generally doesn't because it's not powerful enough. But regardless... They're, re- they're relying on publishers and developers to optimize for the Series S, the assets. I'll tell you what, to be perfectly frank, dude, if I, you know, and I'm more of a business person, but if I was running a studio, I would say, don't bother about that. Just release the game. Like, don't, don't spend any time on that. Because what gain will I have by doing that? Nothing. Like, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have one less sale say- because someone goes, oh, it's a little bit too big. It's 80 gigabytes instead of 70. But no the thing is, they, they may be forced to throw on release on Xbox because the a lot of those higher res things may not even be supported by the S. No, no, no. But they've already said it's up to the publishers and developers, right? So you have to have the assets there that downscale. But a lot of the developers already do that because they've got PC and lo- lots uh, of stuff happening. So you're saying to not include it in the download, the smart delivery kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'll just say don't thing. bother about it. Just like yeah. release the exact same version on the Series X as the Series S. Like, yeah. because you want to code it in such a way it can run on either. But I'm not going to manipulate the install size so the Series S, you know, is slightly smaller than the Series X. That's just... what Like, all, like businesses look at this stuff and just go, will I lose one sale by doing... by not doing it? No. Am I going to spend money to do it? Yes. 
why would I do it? It's, it's, it's actually economically illogical to do it. And I, I think most of them won't do it. I mean, it seems like already the biggest ones aren't doing it and they have the most resources to be able to do that kind of stuff. But we don't we don't know about it the Series S install size of Call of Duty, I don't think, yet, do we? Uh, no, I don't not yet. don't know if we know how the approach Microsoft's that. Microsoft's already said that they think about thirty five percent of them will do it. Mm-hmm. I remember Phil Spencer talking about it. But re- regardless, I mean, it's it's a pitiful it, amount of space. Like there's, yeah. there's no defending it, um, and you can the arguments that people say is well, you know, SSDs like the cost, blah blah blah. Well. To me, I know SSD is like the key, the corner of feature of this gen, but as soon as you start making it actually potentially um, hamper someone's experience playing games and trying to access games, then to me, it's almost like almost detrimental. But we'll see. We'll see whether or not it becomes an issue with, um, you know, like the Series X and the PS5, which have, you know, like, 800 or gig so usable space in their drives um or mm. i think slightly less for playstation but um it's you know we'll see whether or not that it becomes a future uh, an issue in the future for what i'd consider you know the 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 proper consoles <laughs> the pro- the ones the ones that people <laughs> uh, what an elitist what an elitist hey don't you forget daddy spencer said that it's going to be the number one seller the series s well what's so the it's important like- was Xbox 360 Arcade the top seller? Because that's yeah, how I, I compare no, the I think it's Series totally S. different to that. I think well, it's totally different to that. Uh, it's still, like, you. St- if anything, it's worse because... No, like, no that's no, extreme, no, dude. That's extreme no, what you're saying. No, let now. me explain. The Xbox Arcade was the same technically as the, re- as the normal 360. It was just the fact that it didn't come with an inbuilt hard drive, it came in, it gave you these memory things, right? Yeah, which was a massive problem. Yeah, that was a massive problem, but the actual <laughs> Series S is actually way less powerful than the Series X, so it's worse in when you compare the two, the dis- the disparity between the versions of each, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah um, but I mean, it's not necessarily 100% true what you're saying, because y- yes, it is less powerful. It's not like the PS5. PS5 Digital and then the PS5 Disc Edition are the same CPU, RAM, it's everything. significantly less powerful. No, no, no. We've but what I'm saying numbers. is... No, no. Let, let me finish my point. It's that they are outputting to different resolutions. And I get that. I actually... That's what I do on my PC. I have a 1440p monitor and a 14... Oh, sorry, a 1080 monitor. And I actually game mostly on the 1080 because I output at 1080 and then I get a higher frame rate. So for me, it feels like the same quality as the 1440, right? So, like, it's a little bit like that. It's, yes, Mm. the actual machine is less powerful, but it's pumping out less. So then from a frames, you're around the same. It's just the fidelity of the image is less. Mm. But then, uh, by the way, I think most people, well, not most, but a vast majority of people don't even have 4K or haven't even set up their 4K TVs correctly in the first place. 100%. Like, I don't have 4K TVs. Yeah, so so you're not going to notice the difference. It's actually uh, not going to perform that much better. uh, Give it... Give it a, a year, and I reckon we'll start to see games that are running way like are running way. I'm trying to think of the be, the best way to explain it. Like I reckon struggle we'll on start, it. so it's going to yeah. become like the base model of the I, Xbox I, One and PS. I reckon 4. we'll start to see similar to mm, how games struggle maybe. on the Xbox One versus the Xbox One X. I reckon we'll start to see that happen, not at to begin with, but okay. I think we'll start to see that become a thing where it's like we'll have. Uh, it struggles on the Series S, but it, and it runs smoother on the Series X. You know, I reckon we'll see that um, because the whole like I understand what you're saying, hundred percent, and it, and it, it's it's all it's all correct. I just think that at some point something's got to give with that the less computing power, and I think I think we'll see some games struggle with it. So yeah, and look for me like the way I look at it. You know, and and by the way, we haven't even really said where we landed with these consoles because last week, you know, I told you that I got um, Game Pass. I think that was last week, right? Yeah. Um, and you know, by the way, in our notes, I've created a chart which shows how the amortized amount that I've spent on Game Pass versus <laughs> how much I've saved on not getting it. So, like, I've got like a graph, and I want to see if it actually stays above it from a cumulative perspective. That's crazy. Um, That's crazy. <laughs> but uh, what? Well, yeah. So that triggered me to go, hey, you know what? I might get like Series X, 
and, and we will talk about this news later. There is a game that got announced as part of Xbox Game Pass that I'm super excited about. And I was kind of like, oh, okay, these kind of games are coming on Xbox, but then it's coming on PC. And, and ultimately, I guess where I'm landing with this generation, I just feel like, you know, I've got a very beefy PC. It's probably more powerful than the next-gen consoles, number one. And then I've got, like, like it's almost, for me, feels like it's illogical for me to get a Series X. Given that I've got Game Pass, PC, it would make way more sense to get a PlayStation 5 eventually to complement that, that setup. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. And and where are you landing? How, like, do you have a gut feel as to when you're gonna? Because you you are gonna get as Xbox Series X eventually. Oh, 100%. but is that is that within a year? You reckon? Is that? Um. Well, <laughs> <laughs> if I mean, if you if you saw it in the store, <laughs> now we've already no, confirmed. No, no. We've already confirmed with the store because I've got a one X. Because I've got a one X that is is doing me fine at the moment. There's... No, no, no. But okay, can I can I play? Can I paint the scenario? Can I paint the scenario? So you're playing Valhalla on the One X. It's struggling a bit. You're hearing all these, you know, reports about how beautifully smooth it runs on the Series X. And then you see one in the store, <laughs> the Series X. What I do you went do? through that exact process with um, <laughs> Origins, Assassin's Creed Origins. The exact so same you are thing buy happened. It. No, no. So the exact same thing happened with Origins on Xbox One and the One X. Yeah, is that the One X was running the ran the game. Apparently, way smoother and nicer and everything, which it did. But um, the playing through of One X was was still fantastic. So um, I think that's probably going to be the exact same with Valhalla because they're usually really good at um, optimizing the games, uh, Ubisoft with that stuff. With um, with the One X, as I mentioned before, if as as soon as they turn around and say, "Okay, this game has been ported," and it's such a weird thing to know the whole port, but backwards compatibility thing now, but. If they port and make, okay, here's a remastered version of a game that I really like, mm. um, you know, not that this would ever happen, but let's say Final Fantasy Thirteen Trilogy gets a remaster in the next gen or something, right? Not that and people are screaming out for that. So that's just an example. I'd probably <laughs> be like, not. <laughs> okay, then that's an example when I would actually pick it up, just like I picked it up when um, the Xbox One, when they announced Dark Souls 2 Scholar of First Sin. So there's something that, you know, or of course a brand new game. Like if Elden Ring turns out to be um, next gen only, um, mm. which is which probably, I think it will, yeah, which I agree. Um, but the thing is, I don't think that game's out for a while. But let's say it turns out that's a mm. game coming out in March, right? It's not. But let's an example. <laughs> I'd be getting be one then. I'd be getting one then. So it's an example of like it, yeah, it's going to take it. a game or like a, a really cool remaster of a game with a separate achievement list. That's going to get me across. So. How about Final Fantasy VII Remake, if that only came out on Xbox Series? Uh, I probably wouldn't pick it up just for that. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I, my feelings on that game are, you know, slightly complicated. Um, but that's a, that's, a, that's a separate thing. But uh, I look, I will be picking one up. It's just I'm probably not going to pick one up for, uh, you know, I'd say March, April at the earliest. Um, unless, unless there's a reason that we think, you know, that I'm like, okay, it makes sense for the show. That's, I'll say the one, the one, <laughs> well, you know, I've been waiting for this excuse no, to come out. No, no, no. The, show. The, the thing is, if something comes, if a game comes out, it's like, okay, we need to, with something, you know, like I've never had that justification <laughs> before. That's the only yeah. other reason, but I don't think, I can't see that happening before, before like that March, April, which is probably when I, you know, consider picking one up, so. Mm. And it's interesting because you're right though, like just talking about the games, so many games that are getting announced even after the next gen's out, they're actually talking about the games coming out for current gen or soon to be last gen. So there's a massive lag um, for the system. And that, that includes an announcement that just uh, happened overnight 